All right. Now in module 6.1, continuing through the class examples here, uh, we in previous videos in this series, we've looked at and we've introduced the product rule for logarithms, the quotient rule for logarithms, and the power rule for logarithms. What we're doing now in this video and the next video is combining combining all of those uh, rules for logarithms and working through some examples uh, where all of those rules or some or all of those rules come into play and we have to figure out how to how to break it down. Let's start by recalling those rules here along the bottom of the screen. I've got all of those rules, the starting from we're, Reading from left to right, I've got my product rule for logarithms, my quotient rule for logarithms, and my power rule for logarithms. There's all my log properties that are going to come into play in the examples that we're working in this video. And so let's start with question number 13 that asks us to expand the single logarithm log of x squared y cubed over z to the fourth into a sum or difference of logarithms and then split it up as much as possible. So here, the first thing, <coughs> excuse me, the first thing that I see is we've got a fraction, a fraction with a numerator and a denominator, and that's going to uh, mean that we need to apply our quotient rule for logarithms. I'll do that. I'll split this quotient within a single logarithm up into a difference of two logarithms. So log of the numerator, x squared y cubed, minus a separate logarithm, z to the fourth. From there, I see in the first logarithm, log of x squared y cubed, that is a product, x squared times y cubed. That's a product of two uh, terms inside the logarithm, and I can use my product rule to split that up into a sum of two separate logarithms, log of x squared plus log of y cubed. And then I've just written my minus log of z to the fourth. I, have, um, I can't lose that term, but that wasn't part of uh, the calculation that I was making in that step. So I just bring it down unchanged. And now I don't see any more products, I don't see any more quotients, but I do see powers. So now let's apply the power rule for logarithms, making log of x squared, bringing that power of 2 down and turning that first logarithm into 2 times log of x. Similarly, log of y cubed, bring the power down and I've got 3 times log of y. Finally, log of z to the fourth, bring the power down four times log of z. And now I've applied all of my rules that can be applied, and that's as expanded as I can make my results. That is as much as I can do. We're done with question number 13. For question number 14, we've got the natural log of the cube root of x squared. Now here, I don't see any products. I don't see any quotients. Do you see any powers? Especially if we look at that cube root of x squared as x to the two-thirds power. Remembering that a radical with a power is a fraction power. It, it can be rewritten as a fraction power. So cube root of x squared is the same thing as x to the two-thirds power. So we see that we've just got a power of x in the argument of that logarithm, in the parentheses of that logarithm, and now we can use the power rule to bring down the power and call that two-thirds times the natural log of x. For question number 15, we've got the natural log of x squared plus y squared. I don't see a product. I don't see a quotient. And be careful, I don't see a power. Okay, I, I do see powers. There's x squared and there's x cubed. Oh, wow, I don't know where I got that from. 
there's x squared and there's y squared. I, so yes, there's powers, but the fact that I've got a sum of these two terms is a deal breaker in terms of trying to use one of these or any of these logarithm properties. None of these logarithm properties say that you can do anything with a sum that is inside the parentheses of a logarithm. It has to be a product within a logarithm or a quotient within a logarithm or a logarithm of where the whole argument is raised to a single power. And that's not what we have here. So the natural log of x squared plus y squared, my answer is the natural log of x squared plus y squared. In other words, there's no simplifying I can do. If you want to call this a trick question, fine, whatever. But, but that's not the point. Uh, the, the point is, can we logically think through all of our rules and see which ones apply and which ones don't apply, and if none of them apply, well, then we can't make any simplifications. And that's it for number 15. Question number 16 <sighs> puts it all together. We're going to need the whole slide for this guy. Here, step by step, one rule at a time, let's consider the natural log of the square root of x minus 1 times 2x plus 1 squared divided by x squared minus 9. First of all, I see there's a fraction that needs to be split. We do that by splitting it up into a difference of two separate logarithms. The natural log of everything in the numerator minus the natural log of the denominator, x squared minus 9. Now we keep working through each of these individual rules as much as we can. In the first logarithm, what I see is a radical. Everything's trapped under a radical right now. I need to get rid of that radical. The square root is the same as a one-half power. So can you follow me when I write one-half times the natural log of x minus 1 times 2x plus 1 squared? All I did was I took that radical, I took that square root, and recognizing that that's a one-half power, brought that out and wrote it as one-half. Bring the power down and wrote it as one half times the natural log of x minus one times two x plus one squared. Keep working. What I see in that first natural logarithm right now is a product, x minus one times two x plus one squared. So let's split that up into a sum of two separate logarithms. The natural log of x minus one plus the natural log of 2x plus 1 squared. It's important and, and helpful to just do one rule at a time, one instance of the rule at a time. Take it as slow as we need to, uh, to just, just do one step at a time and get our correct result and be careful as we go through each step. Here, notice too that I put brackets with the one half in front, because that one half was on the whole logarithm. So it needs to be applied to both the natural log of x minus one and the natural log of two x plus one squared. To show that and to remind myself of self of that, I put the one half in front of a pair of brackets or parentheses to, to, so that I remember that that one half needs to be distributed and applied to each one of those logarithms. But let's keep working, looking at the natural log of x minus one. We can't split that. <laughs> we finally come down to one that we're, where we can't work it any further. 
we're done with that one. But here, the natural log of 2x plus 1 all squared, that's a power on a logarithm. We can bring that power down. So everything else comes down the same. 1 half, natural log, x minus 1, plus. But I bring the 2 power down 2 times the natural log of 2x plus 1. Everything else comes down the same. Minus natural log of x squared minus 9. Great. Now, I can't split x minus 1. I don't have a rule for subtraction. I can't split 2x plus 1. I don't have a rule for addition. But I can split the natural log of x squared minus 9 because I can factor it. x squared minus 9 is a difference of two squares. x squared minus 9 is factorable into x plus 3 times x minus 3, and now we've got a product. Now we've got a product. So I can split that up into the natural log of x plus 3 plus the natural log of x minus 3. And now, whew, finally, no more product or no more logarithm rules. I've got no more products, no more quotients, no more powers. Everything else is just adding and subtracting. There's no more factoring I can do. There's no more splitting of logarithms that I can do. Done. The last step that I'm going to put up on the screen here is just distributing. Distributing the one half to each one of these logarithms and then distributing the minus sign to each one of these logarithms. So that I've got one half natural log of x minus one plus one half times two is just the natural log of two x plus one minus the natural log of x plus three minus the natural log of x minus three. So after distributing, this is what I have and my as simplified as possible, as worked out as possible, answer.